I get asked frequently what cleaning solution I use in my ultrasonic cleaner to clean carburetors, but one I get specifically asked about all the time. So let's talk about it tonight. So that very popular question is, can you use Berryman's uh, Chem Dip in a ultrasonic cleaner? The answer is yes, but there's kind of a slight catch to that. There are two different formulas under the Chem Dip name, so you have to be a little bit careful which one you buy. One is a solvent based and cannot be used in an environment that adds a lot of heat like an ultrasonic. Part of the reason why an ultrasonic works so good is because you add heat plus that little bit of agitation in the water uh, or solution that you're using that help break up and remove any of the garbage that you are off whatever is cleaning so that formula you cannot the other formula which is a water and amine or amine uh based whatever the heck that means uh, you'll see it on the uh on the container itself those can be used in an ultrasonic cleaner because they're made to handle uh, the, the heat and they don't have whatever that chemical reaction occurs or uh, solvent that has a lot of fumes and, and can evaporate very quickly and cause a, a, a very negative situation, especially if you're in an enclosed environment like a garage or shop or something like that. So it's very critical that you get the right type of solution. Now, it seems like most auto parts stores uh, around here anyway have the correct one. I'll leave a link to it down in the description below if you want to take a look at it. Uh, but just get the right one, make sure it's the right part number, uh, and make sure it's that right water uh, amine-based uh, solution. So that's one we're going to use in the ultrasonic cleaner today. We did last Saturday a live stream where we tore down uh, this 1411 carburetor. We're going to try to get it cleaned up. It's a little disgusting, but it's salvageable. So I figured before we do the uh, uh, live next Saturday where we re- uh, uh, assemble this thing let's get it cleaned up and what better way to do that than to test out how uh, Berryman's works in an ultrasonic cleaner so let's go ahead and get this one prepped and ready for a uh, carburetor get in there because this is a very we've talked about this uh, ultrasonic cleaner before being the small one uh, the heating element isn't very good and I can't artificially heat this one so it's going to take probably a good 30 40 minutes for this to heat up to temperature uh, that I want now when we set the temperature on this one uh, it's going to get a little noisy so I'll just talk about it really quick I don't think I'm going to set this one really high uh, typically I like to go very hot with the temperature uh, it just does very well at breaking things down so I think what I'll do on this one is I'll drop the temperature down a little bit maybe well I'll have to convert over uh, from Celsius over to Fahrenheit to figure it out but uh, uh, I'll put it up on the screen what we're gonna uh, set the temperature to but uh, yeah let's go ahead and get fluid in it get it topped off and then uh, prep the carburetor get it uh, uh, heating up and uh, we'll go from there One other little detail here, sometimes uh, Berryman's will put on top of this container uh, a little warning notice here and I would absolutely uh, abide by this because if you don't, you're going to run into some issues with how it treats the material that's in there. Uh, but the warning is don't seal a container with metal parts inside, don't soak aluminum, zinc or pot metal for more than 400 hours. The reason being, is it will start to deteriorate the coating uh, and the uh, material, and you just definitely don't want that. You're trying to clean it. You're not trying to alter the look and the, uh, um, you know, composition of it. So just be a little careful with it. If it's got instructions on it, follow them. You're going to need it. If you watch the live stream of us tearing down this 1411, it's got some crustiness in there. Uh, it should clean up fairly well. I didn't do anything with this. I haven't hit it with any uh, carburetor cleaner. I haven't done anything to clean any of this off. I just want to see 
uh, how this is going to look when it's really, really filthy. This is not the way you should do it. One, you want to keep your uh, cleaning solution as clean as possible. So as much of the big stuff you can get off there, it's always a good idea. Even if it's just, you know, simple with a brush and a little bit of carburetor cleaner just to try to get uh, some of the chunky material off of here. It's never a bad idea, uh, like all the gasket material. I'm going to leave most of this on there. I just want to see how the Berryman's does and uh, what happens with it when, as we're, uh, you know, let it soak for uh, 20 minutes or so. So anyway, I'm not going to uh, do any prep work on this. Uh, again, bad idea. And if you remember on this one, because uh, it's such a small 10 liter unit, it can't do the entire carburetor at once. So I'm just going to do um, the main body and uh, one piece, and then everything else we'll do in a separate uh, cleaning cycle. So let's get this one rolling and uh, get this thing heated up, and uh, we'll get started. And needed a little bit more material, but that'll be close enough, I guess. So, all right, let's get this thing going for 20 minutes and see what happens. I get asked how loud that this is, and it's loud enough, it's annoying enough that. Uh, uh, you know it's going, but uh, 84 decibels, it's spiking a little bit because I'm trying to talk over it, but it's really not that bad. That's about what I thought. We'll uh, get that out of there and I'll show you close up what uh, what that chem dip does to uh, uh, all the garbage and stuff that's on it. So let's take a look. When that comes out of there, it's always a little funky with that, you know, skin that it kind of develops on there. You can kind of see it come off here. Um, I'm, I don't know. Um, you'll see it when it fully dries out. Uh, if it affected it at all, but it's a really, really weird uh, consistency of what comes off of there. Um, again, I, I don't know that I would be worried about it, but it's certainly rather different. So, you know, even if you take a, you know, a brush or whatever to it, it's just really weird how that's taking off something or, you know, the the cleaning material is adhering to it. Uh, but it's almost like getting a sunburn. <laughs> and, um, so it's always really weird. It kind of freaks me out a little bit. But again, you'll see what the finish looks like on this carburetor. So let's knock off some of this crap off here and we'll take a look at it so you can uh, get a better look at it. But I wanted to show you that because it's almost pretty universal every time you do this uh, that that little uh, film is on there. So it's kind of weird, kind of cool. After a little bit more scrubbing, cleaning, uh, yeah, it's um, pretty decent, actually. You know, um, I have to look at this in two different ways. One, I have to look at it what it was uh, when we started, and it was pretty disgusting on the inside. Um, and the chem dip does what the chem dip does. It's uh, very good at cleaning out uh, a lot of that garbage and junk. Uh, not perfect, but, you know, you can't make something look better than uh, what it was when it was new. Uh, but the chem dip certainly does a good job. So let's talk about some of the pros and cons of using chem dip and the ultrasonic cleaner, because there's a few of both of them. So the good thing about that is chem dip is a really good cleaner. I use it very frequently on carburetors. If it's got a light amount of dirt, 
uh, and garbage that I need to clean up out of it, my go-to was always a chem dip, hands down. Just very easy to take uh, everything apart, put it into a, a, a bucket uh, or a, a basin, something to uh, give me a work area, and just a little bit of scrubbing usually does it. Um, the other side of that is uh, because it's not a... Uh, a solvent uh, like the other style of chem dip is uh, it's very very easy on the parts it doesn't uh, doesn't get into it too difficult it doesn't grab a hold of it uh, do, do any etching or anything funny on it where some materials have been a little bit funky with stuff like that uh, the chem dip is specifically designed for that kind of uh, cleaning uh, and does a very good job without being too caustic so for the most part, it doesn't harm the finish. And when it's mixed with heat uh, from the ultrasonic cleaner, it did a pretty good job. Um, you can see that uh, for the most part, I mean, again, you're not going to get it back to what it was uh, prior to being, you know, as filthy as this thing was. Uh, you're not going to get it looking brand new. But certainly it does a good job of making it look uh, good without... Uh, some of the materials that you can mix in with an ultrasonic cleaner that really take off that uh, coating, gray it out, uh, leave it chalky feeling. You know, sometimes you have to use those types of cleaners depending how disgusting the carburetor was. But uh, the Chem Dip always does a pretty good job of, of doing that. So as far as the finish and, you know, the effectiveness of it, uh, Berryman's is a good cleaner on its own and an ultrasonic cleaner. I do believe it's a better product, um, but there's some, you're, you're going to find some uh, arguments on both sides with that. If you've got any decals on here, like the Made in USA decal, uh, the Edelbrock badging on the front of it, it does beat that up pretty hard now. Uh, the, the decal that they use on the side is usually pretty robust. Uh, if you use just chem dip on its own and you don't let it soak into there uh, and really get a chance to break it up, it doesn't do too bad on it. <laughs> but if you use that with heat and it's in there for uh, 20 minutes, it completely wiped that off of there. So if that's important to you, uh, that type of cleaner may not be what you're looking for. That funky, filmy, weird, <laughs> you know, little thing. It is cool. It's different, I guess. Um, yeah, it's nothing to be concerned about for sure, but uh, because that stuff is takes a little bit of effort to remove it from the carburetor, you have to be very, very careful and very, very vigilant about blowing out all these passageways that are on there because if it's on the outside of the carburetor, it's on in all these passages as well too, and you will notice that as you're uh, spraying this out and trying to clean all these passages out that you will get some of that really sticky uh, residue film uh, being pulled out of there. You've got to spend a lot of time doing that. If you don't, you're going to run into an issue. One of the uh, rear jets uh, on this one was very, uh, took a long time for uh, fluid to come back out of there. I went both ways with it, uh, finally put it in from the booster side and was able to blast it through there but you've got again you got to be very careful you, you can't just you know assume that it's all out of there uh, a little compressed air a little bit of uh, pressurized carburetor cleaner whatever it takes to kind of blow through you're going to have to do that so your cleanup time once it comes out of the ultrasonic isn't just a minute or two i prob probably spent a good 30 minutes on this one just to get it into the condition it's in. I'm going to probably spend another 30 on it. Uh, I've got some gasket material that needs to come out of there, and I'm probably going to blow through it one more time just to make sure that we got everything out of there. So just keep that in mind. It's not a um, ultrasonic cleaning for one is not just to throw it in there, and then it comes out of there after your 20-minute bath, and you go, oh, wow, this is beautiful. It looks exactly the way it did when it was brand new. You're always going to have to do some manual cleaning with it. Now, the good news with that is because that Berryman's doesn't really eat up the finish of the carburetor too bad, uh, it is a little bit uh, easier to clean some of that off. So like the, the residue, um, everything that was in the bores, uh, the Venturi came out pretty good. You could just kind of wipe that off. Uh, but I use a, the brush and a little bit of carburetor cleaner just to kind of help get into all those areas. 
but uh, you still have a lot of manual cleanup to do. The other thing here is anything like, especially on the linkage here, that's got kind of that, that linkage, that zinc uh, that was on there is long gone. And that rusty, crusty look to it is still going to be there because the zinc is gone. It stained itself in there. Uh, and the only way to really do that is to remove the, that off of there, uh, re-zinc coat it if you wanted to. Uh, you can use a little bit of the shark hide uh, the protectant that we've used before in the past. It doesn't really do well on metal. It does very well on the aluminum but there's really not much you can do with that. So you've got to be careful too with the ultrasonic cleaner and the chem dip is it doesn't like um, that aluminum, the zinc coating, pot metal type carburetors, anything that's coated on here, which the entire carburetor has that you know, light coating from the factory, from the, uh, the casting process. It, it is kind of a protective coating that's on there. You have to be careful with all that. I would not use that ultrasonic cleaner for more than two cycles in there um, generally one will get you everything you need this carburetor was pretty bad i guess it wasn't the worst i've seen but it was bad enough that had to be a little careful with it so that's kind of the the, the i guess the pros and the cons out of the the last i guess big pro uh, con out of that uh, which i probably should have mentioned first that chem dip, those cans are very, very expensive. Now I say that that they're like forty bucks, thirty-eight bucks a can right now. Uh, I think most of these uh, I had had for a little while, but I used three brand new or two brand new containers in there. Uh, those had never been opened before because I wanted a good, non-diluted, non-crusty. Um, uh, solution to go in there do the cleaning but those are very expensive so like everything else in the world it wouldn't surprise me that you know a year from now a few months from now uh, that those things aren't over 40 45 bucks but uh, it, they're very expensive so that uh, 10 liter tank took two of those and I probably could have put another half a container in there to get it completely submerged uh, on the carburetor uh, on the at least on the bottom side here so you have to take that into account if i would have used three of those that's almost 135 140 bucks that you'd have to invest just in cleaner now you can use that more than once the, that cleaner will go back into the cans and i will reuse it for um, manual cleaning probably for the most part i don't use berryman's in the ultrasonic very often so just keep that in mind the cost is very very expensive to do it this this way so overall would i re recommend the right chem dip formula to be used in an ultrasonic cleaner yes if you're willing to pay the the price of it again very expensive and knowing that you're going to have to still come back through and do a lot of manual cleanup on this once you come, once it comes out of the ultrasonic but that doesn't matter whether whatever type of ultrasonic cleaner now some of the uh, uh, solutions you can use will use a little bit of detergent soap in there uh, I use that very frequently with another solution that's not very caustic uh, and the the soap or the the dawn dish soap is what I use uh, will lift and take remove some of that off there but there's still a lot of manual cleaning that has to occur with it so if you have any questions about using chem dip in an ultrasonic cleaner if you want to suggest more solutions i keep getting pine saw is one um in a diluted form i may try that one out one of these days but uh, uh the berryman's and the chem dip is the one that i get asked about the most so i figured what the heck would ch try it out next saturday we'll do the live stream to assemble this carburetor uh once i get it finished all cleaned up so if you want to hang around and see that uh, or if you want to see the disassembly it's in the the live uh, playlist you can check that out so like i said if you got any questions leave them down below and uh yeah we'll keep moving on get the rest of this thing cleaned up and uh, get this thing assembled next saturday we'll catch you guys then